Think of an idea that you want to bring into the world. Like all ideas, it's important that we ask questions about them. What is it? Where will it take place? But then there are what I see as the big three. Who will do it? How will they do it? And why will they do it? It's through these three final questions, the uh, who, how, and why, that we begin to see the underlying principles of an individual's identity, which then prompts the bigger question. Who are the people throughout history that have brought game-changing ideas into fruition? And further, what makes them any different than you or me? Throughout my childhood, I used to analyze the young people around me who were paving the way for new scientific advancements, technological discoveries, and social platforms. But as time went on, I remember wanting to take this step myself, pursue a big idea of my own. And it was through this pursuit that I recognized one of the major commonalities shared by young leaders who were actualizing their big ideas. I noticed that these young people aligned their ideas with their core values, and they used this, this energy, to inspire their pursuits and follow through on their big ideas. It's intriguing, right? So what are core values, and how do we come to recognize them? Well, if you give it a quick Google search, the term core values pushes out thousands of digital hits on how we can use our values throughout our everyday lives. While it's critical that we understand how to implement our values, I've actually struggled to find one fitting definition to simply describe what they are. So for the purpose of our discussion today, I will define core values as the foundation upon which we place our footing. It's where our certainty lies when our direction seems clouded or unclear. In short, core values are the ideas, concepts, and beliefs that we adopt to help navigate our life journey. Now, connecting back to our Google feed, another huge question I've tried to answer using Dr. Google is, how do I discover my own set of values? I now recognize that discovering such a foundational part of ourselves isn't something that can be handed to us online. Instead, core values are learned through experience, over time, throughout hardship, and, and reflection upon this hardship and success. So now that we've developed our, our working definition of a core value, how does one come to recognize them? To explain this, I'm going to share my big idea that I spoke about earlier, and how through this idea, over the past 12 years of my life, I've come to develop my own set of core values. A major question that I'm asked when I share the journey of my idea is, where did it all begin? Well, in 2007, my mother was diagnosed with stage three metastatic melanoma. It's an aggressive form of cancer that typically spreads quite rapidly. Like many other children have experienced, I remember hearing my parents explain my mom's new sickness, trying to not over or underrepresent the magnitude of this problem to their, at the time, eight-year-old daughter. But they did it, and they did it bravely. Fortunately, after two major surgeries, my mother was cancer-free. But as time went on, she developed a lifelong incurable condition called lymphedema. This disease, um, which has several causes, came about because of her cancer treatment. And it was at that point, at eight years old, that I made a promise to my mother. I said, Mom, I'm going to cure you or treat you one day. And it was then, just at eight years old, where I recognized my first core value. And that is, you don't have to wait for the rest of the world to catch up to your novel thinking. You just need to begin. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go it alone, but build yourself the knowledge base and a small group of people who share the same passions for your ideas as you do and use this passion to drive your ideas forward and convince the rest of the world why these ideas matter. And that's what I began doing. A couple years after making this promise to my mother, I began researching, compiling different articles and studies, all surrounding my goal to develop the first pharmacological treatment for lymphedema. I began surrounding myself with people who realized how serious I was about this endeavor. And by the end of grade nine, I was working with a PhD candidate to finalize my first formal research proposal, exploring a particular set of compounds to treat this lymphedema. Now, although my understanding of the condition was minimal at that point, my proposal began to gain the attention of researchers across my home province of Ontario. 
And so I started meeting with these people, professors, researchers, and healthcare providers who were all interested to talk to me about this idea I had, this process of thinking I had developed. And it was at that point where my mentor at the time, her name is Alison Boyd, she gave me an incredible piece of advice that was passed down to her from one of her mentors as well. I now recognize that this is another key principle or core value shared by young leaders who are actualizing their ideas. She said, Catherine, you've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Now, it may not feel great in the moment, but in discomfort, I see as though we have two choices. We can either step back into our comfort zone and wait another day to push our boundary, or we can rise to the occasion and unlock our true potential, which sometimes takes a bit of a push, some involuntary courage to realize. But I've noticed that this process of journeying into uncharted territory and, and pursuing something grossly different than anyone has ever done before reveals something extremely important. And that is, great leaders opt for discomfort. And that's why they're remembered, because they do things differently. That's how I premise the next part of our journey here. By grade 10, I was working on a preliminary research project, exploring the same set of compounds I had identified a year prior as a 13-year-old. Although I wasn't working on precise models of lymphedema, I began to recognize, um, I began to recognize the skills and tools I needed as a researcher to excel in my pursuits. I even began to present my data at university group meetings and conferences, and at one point even found myself in a classroom of sixth graders, teaching on the importance of knowing what you stand for when you're going to pursue a goal that, to some, seems unattainable. A few months to follow, an internationally recognized lymphatic researcher named Dr. Pierre-Yves Van der Weide had heard about the 14-year-old trying to cure lymphedema, and he saw potential. So by invitation, I actually moved across the country here to Alberta to pursue my research project using experimental models of lymphedema. It was at that point where I recognized another core value shared now, not just by myself, but with the people who surrounded me on my journey to making a difference. This is when I learned about grit. Grit is definitely a complicated topic. It encompasses things like resilience, determination, perseverance, all attributes that we typically associate with great leadership. Think Barack Obama, Steve Jobs, Ellen DeGeneres. Each of these people have faced their own unique hardship and yet have still been able to push their boundaries, achieving greatness. Now, young people with grit are much the same. It's a matter of when you have an idea, you realize it. And when you face boundaries, don't just overcome them, you use them to build your strength. And finally, when you think you've reached the end goal, set a bigger one. This is how I've learned to view grit over the course of my personal journey and, and working alongside others who are pursuing their passions. Now, I actually enjoy reflecting on the moments where I faced what I view as larger boundaries, because it was through these challenging moments that I was motivated the most along my journey. When I ask my colleagues, these young innovators and researchers, about their roadblocks, they say the same thing. These boundaries we face push our brains to bend in ways that might seem entirely unimaginable at first. Coincidentally, that's something that these young people, as well as all young leaders, do extremely well, which leads us to our next core value. Creativity is not an asset, it is a requirement. This bending of our brains allows us to approach problems and to look at challenges in ways that nobody has ever looked at them before. And again, it's the people who do things differently that make the greatest impact. To date, our work has, has shown some promising experimental evidence of this particular compound and, and its ability to uh, potentially treat lymphedema. Now, looking at this creativity concept, I remember a moment where our research team had to get very creative to keep my idea alive. I'd been living here in Alberta, uh, pursuing my research goal, but at that time, just like my classmates, I had to go back to high school, which was in Ontario. So as I built my professional network here in Alberta, I also expanded my efforts greatly in Ontario. The goal was to be able to support this research project, which required specialized material and equipment at any location across the country. 
By the end of my internship, I'd built a national collaboration of researchers and healthcare providers who were all interested in supporting the idea started by my eight-year-old self. And as I'd mentioned, to date, our work has shown promising experimental evidence of these compounds in improving lymphatic functions damaged by lymphedema. And the project still continues today. So where has this journey ended up? And what is that final key concept or, or core value that I've learned as a result of my experiences? Well, these experiences have taught me that if something is meant to be, it will happen. In other words, to lead fearlessly, we need to have trust. And that's trust in ourselves and trust in the process. Since initiating the project in 2013, I've had the opportunity to speak to researchers, healthcare providers, and patient groups across North America about this uh, idea, about this project has, that's been ongoing, but also about lymphedema as an underrecognized medical condition in need of attention. Our national lab collaborators continue to pursue this project today, which began as an idea to help one person, but has become something far greater than anyone, my mother and I included, could have ever imagined. After living out my big idea, I now recognize that you don't need to have it all figured out at the start. But that's the point. When we journey into the unknown, it kind of feels like our heads are in the clouds. We're un uncertain, it's unclear, we're unsure. But that's when we need to look down at our feet. Remind ourselves that we're still standing on the ground and that we have the foundations, our core values, that will guide us through the unknown and bring our ideas out onto the other side. So let me ask you all this. What do you believe in? And how can you use these beliefs to guide your everyday pursuits? Finally, what are the things that you hold so true to yourself that nobody could ever take them away from you? These may be your core values. Embrace them. Thank you very much. <laughs>